2014, we've been bringing people together to have conversations about soil health. And so Caitlin Landis, who's the extension agent in Grand Forks County, and you've been part of these for a long time, uh, we thought we'd just kind of talk about some of the things we've seen changing and adoption of practices and building this network that, that we've worked so hard to bring all these different people into it. And so where was your first cafe talk? I think my first cafe talk was in Macville, if I'm remembering correctly. It seems like so long ago at this point. <laughs> We've always had really good turnouts at years too. I mean, there have been 40 or more people there for topics about grazing. We've talked about just soil health in general, had different specialists come in and researchers. And um, I really enjoyed a lot of those conversations. And I think we're seeing a lot of, um, a lot of the farmer adoption of practices from your area reflected in the data that we're collecting. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, the cafe talks really help to give us a network between farmers and consultants, extension. Um, I think it really allows people to have some of the free conversations and bring everybody together at the same time. Um, so it really helps expand you know, who people can rely on or who they can go to with questions or just different conversations or topics that they might be interested in related to changing some of their practices or just modifying practices. So one of the things we did as we, as we pester people for information and evaluations on our programs is we asked farmers and consultants, anyone that replied to the evaluation, to list three farmers that they talk with pretty regularly about soil health and then also three individuals who are involved in agriculture somehow, whether it's extension, research, consultants, agronomists, financial planners, soil conservation district people, NRCS. Um, and what we came up with is this really interesting network of people by their profession that, that kind of tells us a little bit more about how individuals are interacting when it comes to soil health. So when you had only farmers communicating with each other, there was 134 individuals and the largest connected group within those individuals was 20 people. And when you added in somebody like NDSU, whether that was researchers or extension, you had 142 individuals and you tripled that largest connected group to 71. So what's really cool is when you start adding in industry and extension and researchers and farmers and consultants and all these different groups that interact in agriculture, we actually get a much higher number for individuals in that network. 240 names were listed as part of that evaluation and the connectivity amongst that group, 116 people were actually connected in some way through conversation, through sharing experiences. And you think about how many resources that adds to the network, it's really kind of amazing. It goes from being one person thinking about soil health in your tractor to 116 people now communicating and talking and sharing soil health. So what I think is really powerful being in an NDSU extension is that we're seeing this huge increase from farmers just talking with farmers and when, as soon as you add an extension you see these numbers more than triple you were saying right to 71 that are now connected versus 20 and then you add in even more people and you're seeing just a huge number of, of people being connected. So of all of those individuals that responded, we have pretty wide age range. So the median age is only 39, the youngest is 21. And so that's a really unique group of individuals, some that are just getting started and some that have been doing this for a while. And I think we had a 72 in there for our oldest, or 74 maybe. And so you have this, this range of experience, which is really pretty amazing. Let's look at some of the data and information that we're learning about practices that are being adopted both by farmers and consultants and their recommendations uh, from these informal discussion groups at the CAFE Talks. So before we dive into those practices that are being adopted, I think it's important to look at the acres that are potentially influenced by this. And if we're looking at the consultants that, that responded to the survey, so 11 responded, they're reaching out with these practices that they may be picking up from the cafe talk or starting to recommend on 327,000 acres. And then if we look at the farmers who responded, there were 71 of farmers that responded and they're using these practices or applying this information potentially to 157,000 acres. So one of the survey results that I saw that really applies to the Northeast and Grand Forks County is the interest in reducing fall tillage, which can help with less wind erosion throughout the winter. And so farmers were already doing some of that reduced fall tillage practices, but we're also seeing that number increase with consultants recommending it as a result of cafe talks. 56% of those that responded were, were interested in reducing fall tillage. And it fits really nicely with what the cooperator from the share farm up here, Sam Landman said about that's one of the steps he's taken on his farm is just eliminating that fall tillage and then coming in in the spring and doing what he needs to prep the seedbed. 
So with the short growing season that we have up here and that tight window that you've got between harvesting your crop and winter, you're starting to see more of an interest on interseeding into something like soybeans or corn so that you have a cover crop established before you get it combined. We also have crop consultants and they're also looking at practices like implementing into standing corn, maybe some of the diversifying crop rotation so that they can include more cover crops in the rotation. Some of the cereal rye I think is another yeah. favorite that comes out with those consultants because it's probably it's easy to get down in the fall, you can interseed it, you get weed control with it. We're just in our sixth year of doing these cafe talks, and I think the goal of them has always been that, that we would start with the cafe talks in, in a heavy presence for main campus, but then that those cafe talks would be just taken over, they'd be taken over by county extension agents and also farmers that they're partnering with. And so I hate to say see you later, Caitlin, but we've had a lot in your county, and, and from here you can take it forward, and we'll just keep expanding into other parts of the state and, and asking county agents in those areas to help us with the program. That's great. I think you can really expand your reach by doing that with county agents and every county can really push those numbers even farther and connect with more people.